Hi there, BRB Adventurer here. We're out on another camping trip and I thought what I would do is, since we're kind of a windy, blustery day, we're not really uh, getting much fishing done, there's so much wind on the lake, I'd uh, do a fire series on how to start a campfire. But some things, uh, I'm not gonna get too involved in it, but just to give you an idea of a different species of trees. And I'm in British Columbia in the interior we have a diverse species of trees but this uh this tree right here this is a birch tree these trees you can burn these when they're green uh with the, if you find one that's fallen down or whatever and you want to cut up firewood as long as you get a good hot fire going first these will burn green this here tree this is a fir tree this is a douglas fir tree this bark it kind of has a gray color to it and then it has these other little like valleys that are reddish brown and this this has a uh, really soft needles and when these are small quite often they're used for uh, Christmas trees and then back here this year is a spruce tree and you can tell a spruce tree because the bark is kind of like little puzzle pieces and it's uh, scales there's a uh, the scaly bark mm -hmm. and this firewood this is good for firewood but it makes a lot of popping sounds when you burn it and this needs to be absolutely dry as well as the fir tree needs to be absolutely dry before you can burn them they will uh, they will just smoke and create you an unlimited amount of frustration to try and burn these green and here we have this tree this has uh, it's kind of a weird bark. It kind of looks like the back of an alligator, I would say. But this is a poplar tree. Uh, they're very, very wet. These got have to be dry, and and they're not very desirable for a campfire wood because they have a lot of ash to them, and they really don't put out much heat. So if I find one of these and it's laying down and it's dry, I'll cut it up and just use it to like kind of keep the fire going through the day. But if you want a good hot fire for cooking or you want a good hot fire to get warm avoid this species of tree it's uh has a leaf pattern very similar to the birch but the bark is very different it's a so when i'm at the wood pile here just explain a little bit more about the types of firewood we have i showed you the fir tree the spruce tree the birch tree and the poplar tree now once you get your wood cut these were all laying down on the ground these were blocking the road actually and we cut them up and we brought them to camp but there's a mixed species in here now this this is a spruce tree you can tell by the way the bark kind of flakes the, this is the one I was saying makes a big pop when it burns it, it snaps and pops so if you want to have a nice crackling fire this is a good species now this species here, this is um, a pine. You can tell because the color is a little bit different of the wood and the remnants of the bark. It still has kind of scaly bark, but it, this is a, I can tell by looking at this, that this is a pine tree. This piece of wood here, this is a piece of birch. Again, it's got a lot of lichen on the, on the bark. That's not natural for the bark, but this tree had blown off over here the top of that tree blew off and this was also just laying on the ground so we uh, we harvested this for our firewood now birch wood burns quite hot and is very good for cooking so if you want to get a fire going get a good hot fire going using these other softer wood species like spruce fir or pine and then start to put in your birch and that embers will build and then it will make a really hot fire for cooking and you got to keep your pieces of wood small i'll demonstrate that a, a, a little later on in the video but we're just uh kind of covering some of the wood that we use that we have at our disposal here in the interior of british columbia but i'll uh i'll get the fire scene going and we'll uh talk about building the fire I have a tree here, it's got a big pocket of pitch and I'm going to 
use my axe just to dig a bit of the pitch out. This doesn't harm the tree at all. It's already got a scar from a, some other previous injury. It could be from the branch falling on the tree or from somebody nailing a screw there or nailing a nail into it. But it doesn't matter. It's just because there's just a big pile of pitch here. And I just use my axe, use part of my axe to dig into the pitch and catch it with my glove. Pitch is really dry. Sometimes pitch is like quite an amber color. That's what I was saying before. Sometimes the pitch can look like honey. And this here is, I just found this here tree. And the pitch is very much like honey. This is very sticky pitch. You get it on your hands. It's, it'll stick to your hands for a good long time. But you can use a little bit of butter or olive oil and that'll help remove the, the pitch from your hands. But this is a, you can use this to start a fire too, but I like to use the dryer pitch. Hey there, so we uh, collected a bit of small wood here. One of the things you want to do before you get your fire going is you want to be prepared with the small wood. So kindling is great. We pick up, I do a combination of kindling and I'll just pick up stuff that's on the ground and around wherever long as it's really dry you'll be good. What I do is I uh, just look around on the ground all kinds of little sticks and debris. You want the smallest stuff you can find to get the fire going. Oh, there's some good stuff over here. Just whatever. Pine cones, leaves. Get that all ready. Set it beside the fire pit where you want to get your fire going. And then we'll go to the next step okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm just collecting up my wood I split to get my fire going bring it by the fire with a tinder and the small pieces I brought I like to use a little flat piece of wood here put my pitch on that and I'll grab my pitch We've got a lot of wind here today, so you need a little help with some other bark and stuff. But then you just kind of take this tiny little bit of wood, tinder, small little teeny pieces. And then the, you'll see the sap start to melt and take off on its own. Okay, the sap's burning. Don't get too excited about putting wood on too quickly because you'll just end up smothering your fire. pitch is burning now pretty good. I can see it's melting. I'm just going to make it like a little teepee idea for this. Let that catch. The pitch will hold quite a, quite a while so you do have some time to put your sticks on there. Once you see the sticks are burning out, we got a good flame. You can start increasing the size of the wood that you're using. That was a little hot actually. But what do you expect from a fire? You know I can see the little kindling I had underneath there is, is caught on fire. It's burning the debris quite nicely. Be long and we'll have a rock and roll fire going.
if it hurts to give it a little bit of a blow just to catch the dry stuff on. Okay, we're well on our way. There's two kinds of fires people like to build. Teepee fire, you stick all your wood in like this. But I like a log cabin fire. It just burns down a little bit better. You stick your wood on the fire like that. Like that. And then it'll catch and it'll continue to burn. You don't want to keep your pieces small at first. No sense chucking a big huge trunk on there, it'll just smoke and won't catch fire very well. You got a good base there. That'll catch. That'll get going. I'm quite sure it'd be more spectacular during the night time. But uh, here we are. You just want to cook a few hot dogs. What are you doing, Brown? What are you doing? Making a wiener roast stick. So I'm nice older in here, so older makes a good wiener stick. It's a nice sweet flavor. Unlike willow that's bitter. Or spruce that's also bitter. Hey, did you like this video? Comment, subscribe, and share my videos. Please consider becoming a Patreon. By the way, if you hammer on that bell icon, you will be notified when I release new videos. Please check out my social media. If you are on a computer, all the links are down below. And if you are on a mobile device, you can tap that arrow on the right below the video to see all the links. Thanks for watching. Remember, no matter where you are, you can always make your own adventure. Ow, that hurt.